Hi, it's Vex, and today we have a special guest, Joda the Unifier. That's right, Joda wants to unify us and win, of course. Joda is our legendary Cascade commander, and Joda is a Wooberg commander, so let's actually read Joda right here. Joda the Unifier, second generation of Joda, or same Joda, just different card. Wooberg, one of each color, five color, uh, Creature, so you play any card, legal and commander, which is amazing. Legendary creature, human wizard. Okay, two important sections. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Yes, Joda says 5-5, five, five, but Joda's pumping ability automatically pumps him to 6-6 six, six right away. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. That essentially is legendary cascade. So when you play a legendary, you you know flip the top until you get another legendary with mana value less than the card that you played. Uh, it doesn't have to be a legendary creature. It just is it's just a legendary non-land card. So of course we want to fill the deck with legendary cards so you can ca trigger the cascade and cascade into. Then also we want to fill the deck up with a lot of legendary creatures. Specifically, because of Joda's uh, creature pumping ability, commander damage is really real in Joda decks. You once you get Joda to ten, you can bash him for ten, play another legendary creature, bash him for eleven, win the game. That is a very real uh, possibility of the deck. Before we go into the deck tech, you know, I have the deck in the description below, along with mentioning that tokens are important. Right, we have two legendary creatures that are tokens. So always have your tokens. That's right. You can always choose to put in a variety of creatures that are printed, you know, as they come. I bet you more and more powerful creatures are printed that deal with how the word legendary or synergize with legendary. So it's just very customizable, the, the creature base. So we have uh, creatures that are, you know, things I like, things that deal with legendaries, things that deal with cascade, things that are powerful. So a lot of cool creature options. So, you know, legendary cascade creatures here. And of course, I forgot to mention that this deck is, you know, starts off very slow. It, we, we don't actually do anything until we play our commander and then play our spell. We do want to optimize playing our commander first because, you know, without playing our commander, you can't play spells. However, you know, we do want to get on the board and, and have some kind of interaction early. And it's also important to mention that you, you can have a bunch of legendary creatures, but, you know, it's uh, better to have legendary creatures uh, across the mana value spectrum. So we have one mana value. Then we go all the way up to our last creature is eight mana value legendary. So you can cascade into things uh, along the chain. So if you play Naomi, you can cascade into y Yoshimaru and such like that. Mint's beloved ranger, you can cascade down into these three. So essentially you just keep a good spread, a good mana value spread. So you can always cascade into something. Okay, we're just gonna go over the cards I've chosen for the deck. Again, very customizable. I love how customizable this deck is. I chose Cards along the curve, some have good legendary um, synergies and such, like Yoshimaru right here is our one drop. I know some people have in their deck list uh, Rograk as their zero drop, so Yoshimaru can cascade into Rograk, but Rograk is not that great. Um, and also have Ra like Ragavan as a one drop. I, I don't like Ragavan in the deck. Almost anything can block Ragavan eventually. I know with Jota on the board, Ragavan gets huge, but without Jota, Ragavan is just like, like a 2-1 monkey. It doesn't really do much. Okay, now let's go through it here. I'll go through quickly. Yoshimaru, this is a legendary synergy little dog, but it's cool because I want a dog. Now, if you want Ragavan, put Ragavan in there. You know, I'm not saying don't put Ragavan in. But this is very synergistic with legendary creatures. Whenever another legendary permanent enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Yoshimaru. That includes our legendary land package, too. So don't forget that. That's also very, very important. We have Neombi, which has Flash, which is really neat. And then a lot of the cards here are multicolored cards. Asika is the Prismatic Bridge of Wooburg card on the back. And this is, when this ETBs, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, gain life equal to that creature's converted mana cost or mana value. And then you discard a legendary card, draw two cards, even legendary lands. Um, you can just return uh, one of your legendaries, so you recast it for Joda. Uh, Safi, Safi Eric's daughter, you could sack it. You know, uh, save save a dude from dying. The Animar, I really like Animar 
because of these the top line right there protection from white and from black um, which is really relevant you know white black spells can't get swords can't get um doom bladed and then whenever you cast a creature spell put a plus one plus encounter on animar the cascade right here from joda is a cast so you would get one from casting your legendary creature if it's a creature then another one from um casting it for from the cascade then you get a discount uh creature spells you um cast cost one less the cast for each plus one plus encounter on animar Asika, I think, is one of the very important cards of this deck. Uh, the front side, Vigilance, add one man of any color. So it turns, she's a mana dork. Turns all, other, all your other creatures into mana dorks with Vigilance. Then we have the Prismatic Bridge here. You know, you can bring stuff from your library to the battlefield, but I always play on Asika mode. She's very good. General Ferris Rockrick. If that's how you say it, Rock, Rockrick. Legendary Creature, Human Soldier. We are playing a lot of multicolors, as you can see here, here. Um, Hex Booth from Monocolor, which is actually very important, because actually, Commander, even though it's a like, heavily multicolored format, there's more monocolored creatures and permanents out there, or spells, so it's very relevant there. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a 4-4. Golem, I just always wanted to play um, Gerald Ferris in a deck, so this is the deck I'm playing him in. Not the most optimal, but super fun. Again, deck tailored to, to your liking. Kethis is really cool because definitely a legendary matters card legendary spells you cast cost one less to cast that's amazing there and then you exile two legendary cards from your graveyard including lands until end of turn each legendary card in your graveyard gains you may play this card from your graveyard even the legendary sorceries so kethis is extremely amazing in the deck minsk beloved ranger the reason i like minsk is minsk brings along boo so let's check out for a little boo right here a legendary hamster boo is a legendary so Mince does a you know plus two plus two with Joe's ability for everything because it comes with a little hamster, uh, and then it can you know grow your things. Next set of legendary creatures are our three mana value up to four. And again, I, I think I'm going to speed up a little bit. I, I've been rambling a lot on the other set, but Reki I think is one of the most important ones. Is when you play a legendary spell, draw a card. So when you cast a legendary spell, uh, draw a card. We have Rocco Cabaret Caterer X Naya. You can, when you cast it, you may, uh, again, tutor for another legendary card, or another card, another um, creature. Usually, right here, Reki is a creature just to uh, tutor for. It's made by X or less. We have Savala. You know, when a creature ETBs, its controller may draw a card if it's greatest power for each other creature. Hopefully, you have most power because Jota grants um, the his power uh, increasing ability. Then you can tap mana for the greatest power among creatures you, you control. Sisse Weatherlight Captain is insane in this deck. Um, she does a lot of things. It's tuna White, where it gets plus one, plus one for each uh, color, color among other legendary perms you control. With Joda, Joda automatically gives her plus five, plus five. So she has a seven, seven with Joda on the field. However, with just Joda and Sisse, Joda grants plus two, plus two because there's two legendaries. So nine, nine, Sisse. Sisse gets huge, meaning that you could pay your Wooburg. Search your library for legendary permanent card with mana value less than Sisse's power, which is with Joda alone, is 9, probably 10, and put that card in the battlefield. It's insane. It's basically letting you search for anything you want, um, any, any legendary permanent you want. So Sisse is amazing. Vega the Watcher. I've always wanted to play Vega in the deck. It's not that great. When you, know, when you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. Cascade, Vega. You know, just, just there. I, I like the art. Jora, Wet Wet Light Captain. When you cast a historic spell, draw a card. Historic is legendary and plus legendaries, artifacts, and sagas. So it's kind of like another Reki. Very good in the deck. If you already have Reki on the battlefield, search for Joyra, uh, vice versa. Wrath, Capuchin, Ship's Mage, Flash, Flying. Other historic spells get Flash. So again, synergies right there. I'm going to have a hard time saying this. Ratajarik, Ratajarik of Orborg, a new card. Vigilance War 2, other zombies you control have Vigilance. You're like, Vex, why are you playing zombies? I'm like, no, 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 okay, read more. When another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Except it's not legendary and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So your legendary creatures turn to zombies and they're also granted Vigilance. So very legendary centric there. The next set of legendaries from 4 to 5 mana value. Again, we concentrate a lot in the middle because we can cast them easily and they cascade to each other very easily. We have Shilai, gives everything hexproof, view hexproof. Not, nothing to do with legendary, but hexproof is very good because you want to protect Joda. We have um, Shandid, Sleeper Scourge. This is a new card. 
Menace, a legend creatures you control have Menace. That's also important with that legendary um, uh, commander damage. And then when you play a legendary land or cast a legendary spell, draw a card, lose a life. So this along with Jora and Reki, boom. Except for this also includes a legendary land clause, which makes this even better. I, I, I always forget the legendary land clause on this one. I mean, it's a new card. Yidris, Yidris is there because, you know, it's got the word Cascade. It's legendary. It's pretty cool. Trample, whenever Yidris deals combat damage to a player, you may cast spells from your hand. I mean, as you cast spells from your hand this turn, they gain Cascade. So you could do double Cascade. This is not legendary Cascade. This is legendary Cascade. But with um, Joda's bonus, Yidris becomes pretty powerful, easy to trample. Arvad the Curse, Death Touch Lifelink. It just grants your legendary creatures uh, another bonus, plus two, plus two. Don't, don't take that for granted. You may think that's like a silly ability for a five drop. However, make your creatures bigger and be able to get them through or just, you know, essentially abyss your opponent because they have to block is very, very good. Chew lane. Chew lanes, you know, when you cast a creature, draw a card. Legendary Cascade is casting. And you may put a land card from your hand off the battlefield. And then you can return uh, creatures you control and then recascade them with a second ability. Drizzt Doran. I hope I'm saying it right. I'm probably not. Drizzt. Double strike. Whenever it enters a battlefield, quick Gu Guinevere, a legendary 4-1 green cat creature token with trample. Uh, whenever a creature dies, if it had power greater than Drizzt's power, put a number of plus one plus one counter on Drizzt equal to the difference. It's mainly there because it generates the uh, legendary cats. Again, granting everything plus two plus two with Joda. Gigantha the Wellspring. We're not playing it as a companion, but you can add Wooburg. And we're playing a lot of multicolor cards, as you can see here. And then you, you know, mana can be spent to play. Mana can't be spent to pay generic mana cost, so you have to pay the colored cost with the Wooburg. You have Gigantha there. You play Joda. It's uh, very powerful. Or you use Gigantha to try to activate one of each of Kenrith's ability. We have Kenrith. No introduction needed. He is the king, king of Aldrain. He does everything. He's the king of the good stuff. As we go up the chain from five mana value all the way to eight, we just have. Powerful, fun creatures. Simut, Flash, Double Strike, Vigilance, Haste. Other creatures you control have haste. Then you can untap some creatures. <laughs> you know, Simut just again gives haste. Pretty cool. Legendary has a bunch of keywords. Surak, Dragon Claw. I always want to include Surak, Dragon Claw in a deck. And this is the following, following the deck. Also has Flash. Can't be countered. Creatures you control can't be countered, which is not that relevant, Commander. Um, some creatures will be countered, but other creatures you control have Trample. That is the important keyword. Trample. Right there. Somebody might block Joda, have, you know, block with a 1-1 because Joda doesn't have trample. And they're like, yeah, I'm safe from commander damage. Boom. Flash and Shirk, Surak, Dragon Claw, give him trample. Aurelia, the war leader, multiple combats. Atali, you know, attack. Get cards from people, top people's libraries. Now remember, Joda's ability only triggers when you cast from your hand, not from exile. Because sometimes, you know, you might not read the card correctly, like me, of course. You attack with Tali, you exile a legendary creature from the top of somebody's deck. You're like, yes, I get to trigger Joda. And you're like, no, I don't. We have Jinka Taxes, Progress Tarrant, the new Jinka Taxes. You could, the older Jinka, older Jinka Taxes is even meaner, but you know, I just want to play Jinka Taxes because it is kind of mean. When you cast an artifact, insert sorcery, copy it. And when an opponent casts an artifact, insert sorcery, counter it. For the first time, each of those happen. Melchon Wanderer, five teamer. Creatures you control have haste. But the reason I want to play Maelstrom Wanderer is because it has Cascade, Cascade, and every other legendary creature is below Maelstrom Wanderer. So you could hit most things except for maybe the Great Henge is where you can't really hit. The Great Henge, however, can hit Maelstrom Wanderer. If you cast Maelstrom Wanderer, do double Cascade, so you do like uh, triple Cascade. All right, enough of the creatures. We have other legendary spells like Legendary Planeswalker, Tejada, Bender of Wills, one red, white, black Mardu colors. Legendary Planeswalker, so that's the word legendary on there. And she's definitely a, a legendary centric commander. Well, can be your commander. Legendary centric Planeswalker. Up to one target legendary creature gains Vigilance, Lifelink, and Indestructible until the end of your next turn. Until your next turn, sorry, not end of your next turn. Until your next turn. Uh, reveal the top four cards of your library, put any number of legendary cards from among them into your hand, including those lands. That's why I have a lot of legendary lands, which we'll get to. And the rest into your graveyard. Create a treasure token for each card put into your graveyard this way. So it's either you get a legendary creature in your hand, or you get treasure. Excellent. If you you know discard all three cards in your graveyard, you get four treasures. Eleven gain control of all non-land permits until end of turn. Untap them. They gain haste until end of turn. So it's like an insurrection. So Dehada is really good. She's a planeswalker, but you can take up to seven. So has some built-in protection. Cost four. You can play it to turn before Joda comes in. 
Then we have our legendary sorceries, which each of them require a legendary um, creature or planeswalker to be in, in the battlefield as you announce to cast these cards. Uh, I've had it where these are stranded in your hand. These are very powerful effects, but they do get stranded in your hand if, you, if somebody does a board wipe and you have Urza's Ruined Blast um, or Karn T Temple Sundering, you, you can't cast it without a legendary creature or planeswalker on the battlefield. So just remember that caveat. Um, there was a situation when I cast a legendary creature and then um, cascade into one of these, which is legal. Uh, once you cascade into a card and announce it as a spell, they can't kill Joda in response um, to make you not be able to cast or is like Ruinous Blast if you cascade into it. However, with the cascade trigger on the stack, if they put kill Joda and Joda's your only creature and you have no legendaries and you, you cascade into this, you can't really cast it, so... It's a weird, weird thing. But let's go through these. Urza's Ruinous Blast. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. You know, when this came out, not all creatures were legendaries. They didn't print like a million legendaries per set. This is really good. This, medium good because, you know, you're never going to kill somebody's commander. You are going to exile Ristic Study, Treasures, uh, Mana Rocks, and all that stuff. Still very good. Carnage Temporal Sundering is always good because it takes you an extra turn. And then you could uh, bounce up to a non-land permanent. Like you control... Maybe you want to bounce your own legendary and recast it next turn, or you can bounce something else that's like problematic. Carnage and Prime Sundering, always good. Yawgmoth's Vow Offering. Put up to one target creature or planeswalker card from your a graveyard, from a graveyard, sorry, onto the battlefield under your control. Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker, then exile this card. This is good, good card advantage. Get your things back. You can steal their things if necessary. Kamaz, Druic, Vow. Okay, so this one is an interesting one because it is X green green. If you cascade into it, it's just green. It's X is zero. Uh, so it says, look at the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of land and or legendary permits cards with mana value X or less from among them into the graveyard for the rest of the battlefield. Yes, Cascade eating into this legendary sorcery sucks. It does it does nothing, basically. I mean, it fuels your graveyard by one. But we'll, we'll take that risk because now we can pump a lot into X and Cascade into something cool. So we're willing to take that risk and play this card. It's really cool because you can put legendary permanent cards uh, onto the battlefield, including lands. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, 7 mana, so it's insane, can cascade into a 6. Return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this is a good anti-board wipe technology. After all those legendary cards, we have, you know, traditional cards removal. We are playing 5 color deck, we have the best of the best removal. Swords, Assassin's Trophy, English I'm making, Vandal Blast, just extremely good, extremely potent. That's why I think 5 color decks are very broken because they have the best. You have Psychonic Rift, Toxic Deluge, Blasphemous Act. Again, extremely efficient, extremely good. Ruinous Ultimatum. Destroy, you know, all non-lands your opponent's control. Who wants? Who doesn't want to cast this? The only penalty of playing, playing a five-color deck is the mana base, which we'll get to, you know. It's hard to generate all this, you know, these specific seven pips of mana, plus Joda's mana, plus, you know, Assassin's Trophy mana. Stuff like that. Just a round of the deck, we have some uh, card draw utility uh, cards. We do have a legendary artifact, one equipment, Black Blade Red Forge. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Equip legendary creature three. So basically, equip three, which is insane. Equip seven for regular. Uh, this does help Joda get to that power, to that commander damage finish. We have Graveyard Hate, Soul Guardian Lantern, Battle Get Recovery to get things back. Guardian Project is on ETB. Uh, non token creature enters battlefield under your control. It doesn't have the same name as another creature. Draw a card. So, you know, gotta have some good card draw. We are playing a lot of creatures, so. Some non-artifact ramp. We do have Bloom Tender, Faber Elder, which you know, you know, tap for each color among permits you control. Add one man of that color. They all add an entire Wooburg if you have Joda on the battlefield. So, of course, playing five color Commander with five color Mana Makers. You know, Smothering Tithe. Then we have I, uh, the two mana ramp that essentially gets you a, um, a Triumph. This deck we are playing all ten Triumphs because you know. I've always wanted to play all 10 Triumphs uh, and I take away all the fetch lands and just try it out. I think it's I think it works in this deck. This deck is not the fastest deck. You can always play E to B tap lands at first. So that's why we're playing this to get our Triumphs out. Continuing our ramp, we do have more than usual ramp and then a higher mana value ramp. Because uh, our ramp actually is legendary right here at the bottom row and does tr trigger Joda. Great Hand is an amazing cheap way to trigger Joda because if Joda's on the battlefield, Joe's already a 6-6, six, six, maybe a 7-7, seven, seven, so it's just called Green Green for Great Henge. We have Timeless Lotus, brand new Lotus from Dominara United. You can add the full Wooburg. Play for 5. Next turn, untap. Play Jota. Chromatic Ori is just as insane, if not even more. You could just um, add 5 
uh, colorless, but you can pay, pay it for any color mana as long as chromatic order is on the battlefield. Or you draw cards for each color among permanents you control. So Great Henge and Chromatic Order are really good card draw spells. Very, you know, there's semi-high mana value. These two are really high mana value. This is medium high. Does a legendary cascade. But then we have, you know, a traditional soul ring, new relic of legends, has even the word legends on top. Add one mana of any color, tap an untapped legendary creature you control, add one mana of any color. That's insane. Right there, and multiple mana. You can tap Joda, whatever. Here, Honor Warren Shuku, uh, add generic. Tap an untapped legendary permanent you control, right? That sounds about the same. Untap this one and then tap for one generic. This one's better because it adds any color of mana, but this one's still good if you can't get this one. Uh, together, they're kind of redundant, but you want to pay two because you want you know mul like multiple chances at a copy of one. We are playing the legendary lands, all five child lands from uh, Neon Dynasty. Then we're playing the uh, three um, lands from Kamigawa, the original Kamigawa. Minamo lets you untap legendary permits. Legendary Creature gain Fear from Sizo. Shinka gives Legendary Creatures first strike. The Yavamaya, Legendary, you know, turns everything into Forest. Untadaki, this is a uh, old card. ETB tapped, pay two life, add two mana to mana pool. Spend this mana only to play Legendary Spells, which most of the cards in our deck are. These lands also synergize with our Shannon right there, because you know, when you play Legendary Land or cast a Legendary Spell, draw a card. And Kethis, which lets you, you know, exile things from the graveyard. You can exile these lands, then play these legendary lands from your graveyard. Continue with our lands. We have this new Plaza of Heroes. Add a colorless. Add one man of any color. Spend this man only to cast a legendary spell, of course. Add one man of any color among legendary permits you control. So with Joda, this becomes a five color land. You can use this man right here to cast anything. If you have nothing on the battlefield, this colorless just saves you. And then you can pay three, exile this. Target legendary creature gains hexproof and instructable until end of turn, so you can save Joda or wherever else by exiling Plaza of Heroes. We have Rainbow Lands, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Mana Confluence, playing Mana co Five Color Deck. Cascading Cataracts, right there, add five mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool. It's just there to, to kind of save you just in case you need to cast Joda and you, know, you don't have all the mana, you use Cascading Cataracts. World Tree, Chromatic uh, Lantern on a, um, on a land. The God Claws, we don't really have gods in the deck, so don't have to worry about that. You could play a God deck with Joda if you wanted to. Path of Ancestry, you get a scry. Uh, Joda is a human, we do have a lot of legendary humans. We have the 10 Triomes, or um, uh, new Compendent Lands, right there. To round up mana base, and Angie Tomb to power our legendaries quicker. Tyrite Sanctum, target legendary creature becomes a god, in addition to other type, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So you can keep on increasing the uh, power by keep on tapping this. Uh, so you can activate the middle part as many times as you want. Then you can sack it, put an indestructible counter on target god, so you can turn Joda into a god, literally, and then get, make it indestructible. Jukabok for Graver Hate, Vesuva, that's been staged to copy things. We have some basic lands. Of course, always buy stores green, because we have a lot of green cards. Green ramp. There we go, that is the deck. Remember, I have the deck list in the description below. If you want to check it out, click on the click on deck list. You know, view all 100 cards, all the legendary cards. Uh, Definitely give that a look. Um, if, but if you enjoyed this video so far, you know, give this video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for news, new new uh, videos in the future. I have my affiliate links in the description below. Add some fun comments. Tell me you tell me which fa which your favorite legendary creature you want for Joda. Um, but I'm gonna shuffle this deck up and see what kind of cool cascades we could do. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. Turn one legendary cascade. Love Joda. And I love the fact that you can kill somebody with commander damage. Joda damage gets big. And people are always thinking about the legendary cascade part, but never never remembering the uh, the giant buffs. The giant buffs do matter. Let's see where we get. Okay. Not a lot of lands. One real land. One modal double face card, which you know we're just gonna turn over. It's gonna be land. That's just basically how it works. That's why I love these cards, they're great. Far seek. That's a first search for land, then man rock. Then another mana rock. Okay, so we got more lands ish. Dihada, Binder of Wills, and General Ferris. We have one uh, mountain like object to cast them, so we need a white and a black. Okay. Well, this hand's not bad. This hand's good. It's turn one. We'll draw a card. Always forget to draw a card. Atali, another red card. Red legendary. Not bad. Six six drops, so it's on curve with Joda. Play our, our tap land turn one. Turn two. We'll play our. Draw a card first, always. 
Joyra, oh, another multicolor card, sweet. Fire Red Land, we'll tap. I was like, too excited to play our Farseek. And then we want to get the uh, um, the Esper Land, the lands that aren't these two colors. They are the Full Arts, so Xander, nope. Rafine's Tower, that's what we want. Rafine's Tower, we'll put in the play tapped. Shuffle our deck here. Deck shuffled, boom. Turn three. See what we get here. Oh, Triumph. Sweet. I love these Triumphs. It doesn't matter. It comes with play tap, but we have we can play Relic of Legends on turn three. So it's a lot of setup here. We'll play Relic of Legends on turn three. Then we'll play our tapped Triome. Uh, we don't have any more land, so hopefully we get land somehow. Okay. Pass. Turn four. Okay, no lands. Okay, but that's okay. Because we can cast right here a green red white black blue cast joda the unifier fortunately we didn't get land but you know it is what it is how it works you can tap joda to add mana right away because this doesn't require it doesn't affect summoning sickness and we'll pass turn five let's see here let's see what we can do two lane okay now if we did hit the land we could play karn's temple sundering but we did not, so let's do some legendary cascading. Joda is a 6-6, six, six, so this will cost three, but we re rebate on two. We play Joyra right there. Yeah, let's play Joyra. And then this makes 7-7, seven, seven. this was green, green, then you can tap them for green. Let's do that, okay. So you know we're like struggling for a little land here, blue, red, two colorless. Here, we'll play Joyra. So Joyra goes on the stack. Legendary Cascade happens, so I think three or less. Uh, legendary, non-land of course. A Sika, God of Tree. It kind of does a Relic of Legend impression. Um, right there, we'll play cast our Sika, and then Jorah goes into the battlefield, so you don't get the cast trigger, uh, draw trigger off that, but it's okay. Okay, so what you can do is now a Sika grants Vigilance, and then they tap add one man of any color. So. Since we did this pre-combat, we could say, hey, oh, sweet, Joda has Vigilance, let's go attack with Joda right there. And Joda has um, one, two, three. Joda's an 8-8 eight, eight already on turn five attacking. So that's how good Joda is. Joda has Vigilance. Then we go to our second main phase. We have uh, one, two, three, four mana because we can tap all of them because of Relic of Legends. Let's see here, four mana. What do we do with four mana? I mean, this is free, right? This is just free. So we tap this one in Joyra for Great Henge, because that's that's free, because you know you pay two and you get two back right there. This is on the stack right here. And then Joyra triggers. Remember, we cast Historic Spell, draw a card, so we'll just uh, draw a card first, and then we'll do a Legendary Cascade. Oh, Cascade, that'd be sweet, but we drew this. Drew a card, and then we'll do our Legendary Cascade here. Jin Kataxis, that's sweet right there, boom. So this is a nine mana value, and this is a seven. Yeah, this satisfies the requirement for Joe because this is nine, this is seven. Okay, and then whenever you cast an artifact instance or source spell, copy it. And it doesn't say the first artifact instance, it says copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. Okay, now we have one, two, three, four, or five mana. Well, let's just copy our timeless lotus, why not? We'll tap this. Tap this, tap this, we'll gain two life. We'll tap all the goodies. We'll cast Timeless Lotus, so, you know, one, two, three, four, five. We'll cast Timeless Lotus, uh, trigger Joyra, draw a card. Path of Ancestry, that's our land, sweet. Uh, and then Cascade here. Uh, trigger Jinka Taxis last. So anything four or less. Oh, you just boom, you just goes into the battlefield. Uh, time to slows goes into play tapped, and we'll get a copy. Copy ETB and play tapped there. We'll play our ETB tap land here. Put Jora back up there. Uh, Yidris does count for Jora. I forgot about Jin Taxis. Counting for Jora as well. So we'll try to draw for this one, and then we'll draw Jin Taxis for Jora because they are casting a spell. We have seven cards, a boat. Boatload of creatures, 
and two, two timeless lotuses. We'll pass to turn six. Boom. You see how crazy these cards get. That's why Relic of Legends is a uh, very good uncommon. Right there we have enough mana to last forever. Enough card draws to last forever. Remember, Jenga Taxes does counter instant sorceries and artifacts um, each turn for each player. Okay, let's see what we get here. We'll draw our card for turn. Guardian Project. Okay, let's see what kind of legendary things you want. You know, we need to draw more cards. More cards. We'll play Chulane. Lane. Uh, we'll just tap the Timeless Lotus right there, straight up, to cast uh, Chulane Lane Teller Tales. So what's gonna trigger is uh, Jorah is gonna trigger. I mean, in in uh, Jota, we're gonna draw first. Right there, we draw first, and then uh, two lanes on the stack. Okay, see you here. Black Blade Reforge. Okay, that gets cast. Two lane gets cast. Black Blade Reforge will just go in this pile here. It's a man rock too, but okay. What else can we do now that these two card drawers? Put that over here. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, let's see what we can do. Tali doesn't have haste. Oh, we should play Dihada, but we want the card more than, not Dihada, uh, General. Let's play the General right here. Uh, we'll tap this. General is a human, so we get the Scry. We'll tap this for white, and then we'll tap this. Play General, Ferris, Rockwreck. All right, here, here we go, here we go, okay. We will trigger Two lane. When you cast a creature spell, draw a card, then you may put a land card in your hand. We'll trigger uh, Joyra, and then we'll trigger jo Jota last. Okay, we'll trigger Two lane. Uh, we'll Joyra first, sorry. And then Two lane. And then we'll do the land card in battlefield. With Two lane, tons of lands, and then we'll trigger jo uh, Jota with uh, a two, two mana value, dude. That's not legendary. Two mana value. Oh, Yoshimaru! Yay! Little dog. It's my favorite. Okay, and you're actually gonna cast this card, so we'll trigger Chu Lane. Uh, I mean, Jora, then Chu Lane, Jora, Chu Lane. We'll just put this force on the battlefield with Chu Lane. Uh, this doesn't trigger because it didn't wasn't cast from hand. Okay, now we've got you know nine cards. Uh, more man that we could ever ask for. Let's see what else we could do. Oh, let's play Dihada. Let's um, tap our Timeless Lotus. And then use everything but the blue from Timeless Lotus to cast Dihada. Okay. This is on the stack. Let's do this here. This is on the stack. These two. Uh, this triggers. This does not trigger. And this triggers. And then this triggers. Okay, we've got, let's trigger General Ferris here. Okay, that has triggered. This will trigger. We'll draw a card. Um, and then the Hada Jota would trigger here. Okay, then we get a three mana value or less card. Oh, Kethis, hidden hand. We'll cast Kethis. These go on the bottom. Okay, see what else triggers. This will trigger, these two will trigger, this does not trigger. Um, this is still on the stack. This is, uh, so we'll trigger this one. Gigantha, then we'll trigger this right there. We'll, trigger, we'll play our Ganjo since it's untapped. More stuff. All right, this is still on the stack. This is a battle, Yoshimaru will trigger, bam. Uh, I forgot Yoshimaru probably, they all get plus one plus one counters from Great Henge and I just totally forgot that. There's too many triggers going on. Um, this will trigger, Yoshimaru will trigger. For this, Yoshimaru will trigger for the Iganjo. Dahada will go on the battlefield. We're gonna minus three Dahada here. Four cards. Boom, three go to the legend, three go to the uh, pile. Manamo goes to hand. Boom, so we make three treasures. I'm running out of space here. This is uh, getting a little ridiculous here. We make three treasures. Uh, this is only turn six, right? <laughs> um, yes, turn six. Okay. Let's see what else can we do. We could play whatever. We have the double blue, uh, the single blue. 
we could pay a blue and some colorless here. We'll cast Karn's Temporal Sundering. Right there, Joyra will trigger. Shulane um, will not. Joda will trigger. General will not trigger. Oh, legendary spells cost one less. So let's just make it cost one less there. Karn's Temporal Sunder. We'll do a Cascade for six. Mana value card. Let's see, uh, Rocco, you get nothing. So we'll cast this. Trigger Yoshimaru. All right, you guys get the gist, right? You guys get the gist. This will trigger this, this, draw some cards. Um, let's go ahead and bomb my yard. Make some golems. Draw some cards. Take an extra turn. Bounce something. You know, draw two more cards. Put a land card in the battlefield. Put a legendary card. Trigger Yoshimaru. Anyways, um, you can see how this deck is very slow. But if you hit the right things, it goes insane. As you can see, we're turn six. We have insane grip. We have an extra turn banked from Karn's Temporal Sundering. We have what's untapped. We have three untapped mana plus a great hand plus all of this could generate tons of mana. We play Ruinous Ultimatum with all our free mana. We play some more Gigantha, Cascade some more. Put Atali on the battlefield, do some more cascading, draw some more cards. Uh, once we play an artifact or an instant source, actually, no, the instant got copied too. Oh, I forgot about. Uh, Jinka taxes now you to take two extra turns. Either way, we're winning. We're having a good time. All these legendary creatures are super fun. Uh, Joda is super powerful, super fun. Again, cut very customizable to what you like. That's what I love about Joda. And super duper powerful. Anyways, if you enjoyed this deck deck, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos. Future I have deck list in the description below. That's right. Use Joda, do some cascading, do some winning, and have a wonderful day.